Coming up, Bob Terzuola and Fox Knives announce a new knife I'm very psyched about. We also announced two exciting new general audience giveaways coming up. And hey, UK, that's not a zombie knife. That's a zombie knife. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week uh, was, again, someone very concerned about my pronunciation of the word Bowie. And he says, I'm very happy to hear you pronounce Bowie correctly. Uh, I do appreciate your, uh, your input, Thomas Reigns, 3663. Uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I say Bowie now, I'd say at least 50% of the time. And when I say Bowie, it's starting to sound weird. And that is strange. I grew up in Ohio, and that's how we said it. We said Bowie knife. You didn't say David Bowie, uh, the the pop star from the UK. You said David Bowie. And, and uh, same with Jim. Uh, but uh, I am now pronouncing Bowie correctly more and more. So uh, thank you one and all. It's, it's, it's a journey getting there, but we will get there. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at... Oh, wait, wait. Actually, before we... I did have one other comment um, that I also liked. And this comment I like because it just shows uh, variety. Off-grid knives. Those are some ugly looking knives. And we're talking about the Cayman XXL buoys. And he said, I guess they are not for everyone. P.S. Love your vids. And this this I really like. This is from uh, Mr. Janker T64. And um, in an age where people are polarized over everything, people get in fights and tiffs over everything. You even see it in the knife community. Um, it's just good to see someone say, uh, agree to disagree. And, uh, you know, I like your taste. You probably like mine. Uh, but those off-grid knives are dog ugly. And I like that people can say that and we can disagree. Um, so, Mr. Janker, thanks for your comments. Uh, Thomas Raines, thanks for your comments. And thanks one and all uh, for watching and commenting this past week. All that said, let us get to a pocket check. Front right pocket today was the Microtech Ultratech double-edged with the serrations on top. I've had this knife for quite a while, I'd say at least five years, and it gets very little carry. But recently, um, I've had to, you know, I went to a funeral yesterday and then uh, and and carried this in my suit because it's nice and light and uh, and kind of John Wicky to to carry a nice light double-edged automatic knife when you're wearing a suit. I can't, I cannot pretend that that didn't. Uh, work into the calculus. However, I don't like to wear a suit and have a uh, a knife in the pocket of the suit, so I put it in the waistband. It can't be seen. It doesn't it doesn't flop around. You know the 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 material on suit pants are way less stout. Uh, I've been carrying this a lot over the past week and uh, loving it. This one has been very very has <laughs> like I just hurt my thumb opening it. Um, not to sound like a total wuss, but. Uh, this has always been a pretty uh, stout pull, push and pull to deploy. But uh, I feel like either my thumbs are getting stronger or it's breaking in even more. But I mean, if it hasn't broken in, this is 10 years old at this point, I think. Uh, I think this was a 2013 model. Maybe not. Uh, but if it hasn't broken in by now, when will it ever? But a very cool knife and a very serious knife. Uh, not only uh, is it very tactically serious, you look at it, it's double edged, and uh, but you can get a lot of work done with that knife uh, if you just keep your thumb off the back of the blade because uh, you have two M390 edges. Uh, he treated uh, really well, very sharp, and one of those sides is serrations. So, really, you know, this very tactical knife could be a very utilitarian knife uh, in the right hands. Okay, next up. I had, here it is in its pouch, I had the venerable and gorgeous Jack Wolf Knives Sharp, oh, that's the wrong one, Sharpshooter Jack on me. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> All right, I think uh, I grabbed the wrong slip. You know what the Sharpshooter Jack looks like, uh, and the one that I have is with the blue Arctic uh, Storm Carbon Fiber, but the reason this one is out, the low drag Jack, I'll just talk about this since it's out. Um, this is, let's get this to focus. This is one of my um, die jobs on the 
black canvas micarta that came on this, which was really just pretty gray and never really took uh, took much color when you put oil on it. Um, and so I decided, well, maroon is like my favorite color. Why not just dye the slabs to this aluminum? So, I mean, um, maroon. So that's what I did. I love the way it turned out. And that's why it's uh, kicking it out here. I have a drawer of my Jack Wolf knives, uh, very, very nicely set up. And it's not in there because, uh, well, I just dyed it. Um, but today, what I was carrying was the new Sharpshooter Jack. And uh, if you haven't seen mine, you probably have. Uh, it does have the black bolsters and the black blade. So just a really beautiful affair and incredible walk and talk. I, I swear the walk and talk is maybe the stoutest so far. And um, I like a stout walk and talk. All right. So uh, as my as my EDC fixed blade today, I don't know why I'm showing it here. I'm going to, I'm going to move it anyway. Uh, I had the beautiful, uh, Kramer custom knives voodoo, and this is Eric Kramer custom knives making custom tactical, uh, fixed blades and folders. Uh, he does, he does, his folders are few and far between, but they're, um, uh, they are there and they're, they're very cool and pretty valuable. There's also a Bob Kramer who makes custom kitchen knives, and I always have to sort of um, differentiate because Eric Kramer made this. Very, very thin, carries so nicely. Uh, I had him sharpen the swedge ordinarily. This this doesn't come with a sharpened swedge. Uh, nice, deep, hollow grind, um, and really sticky sharp on on both edges. Uh, though this edge is, is more of a tearing, gouging, splitting, ripping edge, and this is a really thin slicing edge 154 cm blade steel i love the way that gray looks with the with the micarta this micarta has really taken on a, a nice patina this this was probably the first this is among the first of the fixed blades that i began carrying on a daily basis and thought wow this is easy this is not as hard as it seems be, because you have a, a very thin knife like this with a shortish blade and rounded surfaces like the handle um, that you can carry it easily and almost forget it's there. Last up for emotional support, I had the beautiful uh, and action packed. No, that's not the right term. I had the very attractive and very functional um, Sentinel strike on me from Civivi uh, with the green back strap. It's an integral uh, backspacer that goes over the back or backstrap, I should say, meaning it's just one piece and then it holds these two aluminum slabs together with a really excellent button lock. Um, the very first button lock I had from Civivi slash Suncut was the Suncut Watuga, and that one had um, kind of a sticky button lock. And I, I, since then, they have really perfected it. I have this one, I have the Arc Blast um, by Suncut, and they really have the button lock nailed. I love this one for a bunch of reasons. I think it's very nice to look at. It feels great in hand. It cuts very well. It's got a very useful blade shape and it's fidgety. And oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes I go for fidgety for my emotional support knife. Sometimes fidgety could be like this, opening up a slip joint and closing a slip joint. Sometimes fidgety is a button lock. Sometimes fidgety is just having a big old buoy on you to feel safe. So this is what I had on me today. Uh, this is my pocket check. Let me know what your pocket check is. Let me know what's in your pockets today. Uh, was it useful? Did you use them? Uh, is it just pocket candy? For me, I know a lot of it is just pocket candy um, because not that I'm not ready or trained to use it if it comes up, but heaven, heaven forbid, uh, you know, something more than cutting my sandwich comes up. All right, let's talk about giveaways here. Uh, we have a lot of really generous uh, patrons and, uh, and, and uh, folks watching the show and um, well these two patrons here have given us some knives to give away and I'm very excited about it first one uh, is actually not a knife uh, the first one is from uh, Northern Knives up in Anchorage Alaska and they teamed up with Colorful Filth that's Paul Monko and Lynch Northwest the makers of some of our favorite aftermarket clips to create this really cool package of knife adjacent accessories um so you have first of all i love this design with the doberman and the axe and the american flag very nice uh so in this 
in this box from Northern Knives, Colorful Filth, and Lynch Northwest. You have this Lynch Northwest uh, flight tag um, for, I mean, flight tag style uh, keychain. Uh, those are the things that they have clipped into the bombs and the missiles and various things on fighter planes that you, uh, you it's like pulling the pin. I guess you go around and you pull those tags off and ready the uh, aircraft for, for its mission. Uh, you have this nice little bit of cord, which would go great uh, in my Swiss Army knives. Um, I like this kind of thin cordage, especially as a fob on a Swiss Army knife. You have a Northwest, or uh, yeah, Northwest, Lynch Northwest uh, foldover titanium deep carry pocket clip. Now, for what knife? I do not know. I got to figure this out. I think there might be something in here that says says what it is. There's the Lynch sticker there's the card for you uh thank you for your support casey north uh from lynch northwest here's a sticker and a birth card but here what you're looking at is a really cool pry bar uh it's it's anodized and um cerakoted and creates this beautiful image of the uh, astronaut on the moon there. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, very light. I hold this in my hand. It is super light. Uh, you've got like a nail nail lifter, pry bar, cap lifter. Is this one of those slots for air tanks maybe? Um, and then an overall, the overall ergonomics of a knife handle. <laughs> so very nice. We're going to give this away on Thursday night knives uh, tomorrow night. Uh, this And then we have another giveaway the week after and i'll talk about that in a second but uh thank you mike and the guys at northern knives really appreciate this and paul uh, munko and uh, north northwest lynch clips i look forward to giving this stuff away um you know we give away a lot of knives here but it's nice to also have uh, other sort of accessories to give away i know when olight has sent me things to give away they, olight's not crazy about me i didn't hype up their stuff enough and uh, uh you know uh, but they did send me a batch of uh, stuff once, and uh, it was nice to give away those lights. It's cool to give away O lights. Maybe I'll just buy some anyway to give away because uh, though we are about knives, we have to recognize the importance of lights, pens, watches, and other things on this channel. It's very important. Okay, lastly in the giveaway thing, this is very exciting. Uh, we uh, Two weeks hence, so a week, actually, I should just say a week from tomorrow, uh, Dirk Pinkerton is going to come on Thursday Night Knives to give away this knife. This is, if you know Dirk Pinkerton, he designs a lot of knives for uh, the likes of Concept and Kaiser and uh, those kind of companies uh, beyond EDC, Shield, and et cetera. Got tons of designs out there uh, being made. And, uh, and then he grinds knives in his shop, makes beautiful custom knives. I have a number of those. But he also uh, just had this one built. This was a, a pre-order. Uh, that uh, I jumped in on and then and I've been carrying you've been seeing that and then he just sent this to give away from this pre-order this is number 166 in his ringed inversion series and this one is arguably cooler than the one that I got because it's got the black ring and the black blade oh that that black tumbled finish on the blade is just gorgeous uh, it's got a uh, an orange peel finish on that titanium course it's on bearings comes with a deep carry clip and a thumb disc if you don't want to carry this uh if you don't want to use this sculpted titanium pocket clip and the wave uh, feature there uh but talk about the ultimate classy self-defense knife uh that's it right here we're going to be giving it away this is not a patreon giveaway this is a general audience giveaway so anyone here on thursday night knives uh next thursday could win this thing so uh be sure to join uh, join the join the conversation that night. I will put up a couple of videos hyping it and reminding you. But uh, do do be sure to join us Thursday night knives tomorrow for the Northwest uh, Lynch uh, colorful filth Northern knives giveaway, and then next week for uh, for the Pinkerton giveaway. All right, uh, let us get now to some knife life news. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free. 
the Lon Humphrey Mudbone Muskrat features a 3.1-inch blade of forged AEBL stainless steel, truly functional art that just happens to be a knife. The Chris Reeve Large Sabenza 31 Tanto with the MagnaCut Tanto blade and features the original sandblasted titanium frame and the Topps Mini Scandi folder. This unique flipper features a Scandi ground blade. The knife also feels super solid thanks to its construction of micarta scales over full stainless steel liners. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. This is a great time of year for gun and knife lovers. Um, of course, my approach is as a knife lover because it's SHOT Show. SHOT Show was last week. And uh, just like Blade Show, a lot of uh, knives are announced. SHOT Show, a lot of knives, new product lines, uh, as well as other things, I'm sure. And all the other uh, uh, affinity groups are announced there. And uh, Buck just dropped a whole new line of uh, lineup for 2024 and uh, you can read about this in uh, knife news love knife news ben ben schwartz is a great writer and uh comes up with new and exciting ways to talk about some of the same old things uh i want to talk about uh two knives here in the buck lineup there are a, lot, a bunch of folders that that just don't do it for me at all uh that are not meant to do it for me but this top one here uh jim don't scroll past this one because this one i really want to talk about this is the buckmaster 2.0 in their legacy collection they have a bunch of older knives and patterns that they that they um keep up you know like the kalinga and other hunting knives and and this is their version their new version of the buckmaster and it is a <laughs> It is a dumpster fire, if, if you ask me, and I, I'm sorry to be so harsh on it, but the original Buckmaster, I don't know if you remember that, it was a, a clip point survival knife, hollow handle, had two little um, grappling hook anchors things that you could screw into the quillions. It was a muscular, serious looking survival blade, and, and I spent my childhood lusting after that knife. And then this is what they do to follow it up. This is what they do to... to uh, to honor the legacy of the Buckmaster, God, it, it first of all, it, it's just it's a totally different knife. It's like a dive knife, and um, it is but ugly. And then they have this thing called the emergency anchor wing that you that you slide into the blade. And and I know that it's um, it's a tip of the hat to the old uh, grappling hook anchor things that screwed into the into the quillions of the old buckmaster but it's just it reminds me of a of a gil hibben fantasy knife you know with those things it's terrible looking i'm sure it's very useful 420 hc 6.75 inch blade but come on buck what is this i love buck i love buck don't get me wrong um but this is ugly this is this is this is just a really bad follow-up to a classic knife that Buckmaster from the 80s was so damn cool. I feel betrayed. <laughs> uh, but but you make up for it with the next one. Uh, this is the 112 Ranger Slim Pro TRX. Rolls right off the tongue. Uh, it's coming up here. Um, so this is one more. Uh, this is the... Uh, oh, actually, go one more down from there, Jim. This, this is a cool one, too. But uh, this one I like right here. This is the Slim version they came out with a uh, the buck 112 slim not uh not too many years ago uh, but this is the first time they're offering it in a in a very upscaled version uh modernized with s45 vn blade steel and titanium slab so this thing is is already very slender the the uh the 112 rangers uh slims are very slim obviously and you make it a titanium handle it's just gonna float right off your hand it's gonna be super light uh this is something that's very exciting to me and it also has uh, a a cop a deep carry clip for both sides and it's got the modernized clip point blade with the straight clip i know a lot of people like that better because of how it places the point uh, but I'm a sucker for this old 112 here. Let me pull it out so you know what I'm talking about. I like the swoop on the uh, on the clip here. Much better than the than the straight back of the new one. That's just a aesthetic design thing. But uh, so 
they really, really crapped the bed with the Buckmaster 2.0, in my opinion. But with the one, uh, with the 112 Slim Pro TRX with titanium and S45VN, they have redeemed themselves. Uh, so I'm sure they will be happy to find that out. Okay, next up uh, is from Fox Knives and Bob Terzuola. Bob Terzuola, if you don't know, which I'm sure you do, but I'll say it anyway. Godfather of the tactical folder. Uh, very, very great guy. Uh, his contributions to the to the folding knife world to the knife world uh is immeasurable and uh, he's still at it as a matter of fact uh, i can't contain myself i'm going to be interviewing him again for a second time or i should say i'm going to be interviewing him for a second time uh very shortly and uh he has been um uh well he was he has been on the show but it was very early before we were even uh on video so i'm very excited to have him back on the show anyway his real legendary knife the knife that really started the tactical folding knife craze is the atcf the advanced technology combat folder uh you will recognize this profile immediately uh so very 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 excited that fox knives for their 40th anniversary is going to be producing this right here this production version of the atcf and as far as i know this is the most uh is the highest fidelity um reproduction of the custom atcf in a production model that i've ever seen and i'm so excited and and they're keeping it on the largish side now the atcf is usually about a four inch bladed knife they've knocked it down to three and a half inches but i can live with that that i can live with um magna cut very exciting and a very low profile flipper um in line with the original thumb disc liner lock those are in the original uh, ATCF designs. Uh, this will have a full tie version, or like you see here, a black G10 version. And oddly enough, this is one of those rare cases where I think I might be prone to um, getting the G the G10 version. I'm just looking at it. It looks so cool. Uh, we'll have to see what the tie version looks like. I'm sure it's kind of a just a plain Jane tie, which is also great. But I'm loving it in the G10. Um, Bob Terzuola's knives, uh, do it for me. He's like a Bill Harsey and a few other people whose designs I, I can spot immediately and just warm the cockles of my heart. Okay. Next is case knives. You know, I've been into case. I just, I just showed one off, just flashed one, the case canoe love case knives. Um, not always a popular taste. Some people don't like them because their fit and finish can be spotty. I say you have to know how to choose them and what which lines to look at. But uh, anyway, they have been in a modernizing streak over the past five years, coming out with the with their uh, frame locks and uh, flippers and liner locks over the past few years. Uh, they have a new series that bridges that gap. It's a modern traditional lineup. They're calling the Bridge Line series. Uh, bridge line so um you, you sort of get you sort of get it there bridge line it's bridging it's the line that bridges <laughs> from their very modern to their very traditional uh first one is the high banks um which is not pictured here uh but it is a really nice looking worn cliff uh a uh, non-locking uh, with a fuller style nail neck i, I have seen this knife on a number of people's uh videos from shot show when they're talking to case knives that's a cool looking knife good looking knife 20 cv blade steel so uh modern steel uh a modern design uh of a slip joint and then the longhouse that's the one that we just had up on screen uh, this is a front flipper only liner lock with 20 cv and to me personally this is the kind of flipper kind of stuff I want to see from case uh there 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 are other flippers are you know i'm sure sure people love them they don't do it for me F to me the the real usp of case is not only their their traditional builds but the traditional sensibilities and designs and to me this really does um this really does tap into both the traditional design sense and what's happening now with front flippers and liner locks and 20 cv that kind of thing super steels so pinched bolsters on that one as opposed to the uh, fluted bolsters of the other uh, and also a, a nice deep carry pocket clip uh, news to come on their availability and uh, they are also intending on growing this product line so that's exciting all right last up 
in Knife Life News today, Spartan Blades. Oh, my gosh. Spartan Blades, they just keep releasing knives to vacuum my wallet. And this is from Bill Harzi, who I was just talking about, who to me is one of those designers who's just absolutely beyond reproach. This is the Clandestina. Clandestina. Uh, I like I like the name. Uh, it, it is a 5.5 inch Magna Cut spear point in that same design language uh, as the Defensa, the larger Defensa, and the smaller Tactical Trout. So this is uh, now completing that that lineup as a three knife lineup. They all kind of have the same profile, just different sizes. Tactical Trout is the smallest at I think a 3.75 inch blade. You've got this 5.5 uh, inch blade, which kind of is right there at that sweet spot. And then the Defensa uh, is a six, uh, six and a half inch blade. So to me, these are so beautiful and they are really emblematic of uh, Bill Harsey's designs. Look, especially at the hand guard or the finger guard area and the Ricasso, of course, the blade shape and the handle shape. But that area to me, you've seen that on so many different uh, that that little area right there at the Ricasso. So many uh, knives all the way down to the Gerber Rock. Do you remember the Gerber Rock? What a cool knife that was. You used to be able to buy a Bill Harsey knife at Walmart in the shape of a Gerber Rock. It was a $40 um, outdoor fixed blade with a rubberized handle, but it had a very similar profile to this knife and the defense and the tactical trout. And I don't think that exists anymore. I had it. I think I gave it away or sold it. I don't know what happened to it, but um, classic design and, and then made by um, uh, Spartan blades and S in, in uh, Magna cut, it's going to be expensive, 350 bucks, something like that. Prohibitively expensive for me for a production fixed blade. If I'm spending that money, I'm spending it on a, uh, a, a handmade custom fixed blade, but I love this thing. I think it's beautiful. And I really, really uh, have to figure out how to get more, um, Bill Harsey Jr. designs in my, in my collection. Okay, uh, I think we're done with Knife Life News. A lot of exciting stuff announced at SHOT Show. A lot of exciting stuff coming in 2024, and I'm really excited about it. If you want to help us get, get our hands on, uh, uh, not on these knives, but on the ability to bring these knives to you in the shape of this and uh, other videos and podcasts, you can help us out at Patreon. Uh, just go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Check out what we have to offer in return for your patronage. Uh, a monthly knife giveaway is the probably the most exciting uh, besides the interview extras. Everyone uh, I interview here, we do an extra interview, and that becomes available to patrons a few days before we release the, release the um the podcast interview proper. So be sure to check us out on the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code right on your screen. I will repeat that complicated address. It's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so, ah, uh, sorry, I don't mean to start, I'm never going to start my sentence with okay or so again. Launching right into it, many exciting knives came to my door this week, uh, and none of them are mine, but uh, it doesn't bother me, they're on loan, I love it. Actually, I got one uh, little gift, and I really appreciate that, I'll show that off to you in a second. But this one is not my knife, this is Jock's Knife from Jock's Knife uh, on Instagram, He's a great friend of the show, patron of the show on Patreon. And let me see if I can. Okay. And he lives over in the UK. Oftentimes he'll, he'll buy a knife here, have it uh, shipped to me so I can check it out. And then I send it along to him. It's a great, uh, a, a great little back and forth we have there. Um, this is the stump lifter from advanced knife bro and blade HQ. This is an exclusive from blade HQ and uh, we know uh, uh, Advanced Knife Bro, uh, what a great guy. He's been making filmic, qual cinematic quality and funny knife videos for years now. He was on the show early on here. We talked to him when we were just uh, audio. Interesting guy. Uh, Mark is his first name. Uh, big, big slip joint collector and big, big fixed blade collector. And uh, 
his videos feature a big stump in his backyard that he that he batons things on and test knives out on. So here, let me see if I can get this to focus. There we go. That badge there, that uh, is the stump. Everyone thinks it looks like a cup of coffee, but that's the stump he does all of his testing on. So it's called the Stump Lifter, and uh, it's his slip joint design, manufactured or OEM'd by um, QSP. And uh, we, I have a bunch of QSP manufactured uh, slip joints, and they are awesome. And this one is no exception. Nicely hollow ground spear point blade, beautiful swedge, long pull. And then over here on the other side, this is a this is a two layer knife. So each one of these tools has a spring. Here we have a cap lifter, screwdriver, pry bar type tool, both on half stops, and uh, both of 154 cm blade steel so great steel i like this choice i i, I know from watching uh his videos that that was sort of a compromise um to me i'm thrilled 154 cm is a great blade steel it's easy to maintain it's easy to sharpen it keeps its edge very well reasonably well um depending on what you're doing with it obviously and uh and it's very corrosion resistant i mean people still use 154 cm a lot so i'm i'm very happy with the with the choice of 154 on this um i love the green bone it also comes in yellow bone and blue denim micarta i believe uh, however right here uh, on this on jock's particular knife it might be hard to see but around the badge it's like they forgot to rebuff it so it's like nice the bone is nice and shiny and buffed all around here but you flip it over and right around the shield, it's a little bit dull or unpolished. Uh, if this were my knife, I'd hit it with a little bit of flitz and see what that did. You can, you know, it's it's not that far gone, but we always talk about fit and finish and we say fit and finish like it's one thing, like LMNOP is one letter. Um, but fit and finish are two different things. How well do the pieces fit together? And then how well is it finished? And the fit on this is extraordinary. The finish is almost perfect. Just the finish right around here is uh, is lacking. But I have no doubt Jock can take care of that lickety split. Stump lifter. I got to get one myself. Uh, not only is it a cool knife and I'm really in a slip joint phase, uh, but always fun to um, support our friends in the knife community. That's that's my excuse. What's yours? Okay. Uh, next up, these are also on loan, and and this is also a case where it's a patron who lives overseas who drops ship stuff to me so I can check it out, send it along to him. Um, also, I think it. Well, okay. So next up, uh, let's let's look at this. This is cool. When this box came, this came in a large box because uh, this person also ordered a case. Uh, for um, it's a popular case right now for showing off your knives. Um, it's not in here and it's upstairs and it's got a name that begins H and H something. Anyway, when I opened it up, I was like, I had been contacted by a company who wanted to send me a knife storage case and they never sent it. This happens a lot, actually. Hey, we want to send you this thing. And then they never do. But um, so I thought for a second, oh, it finally came and I opened it up. And there are three knives in there. And I'm like, wow, they really like me. They're like sending me not only this free knife case, but they're sending me two like very swish free knives. And my daughter was hyping me up. Dad, you've arrived. This is awesome. People are sending you tons of free stuff. And I was, and I was like, this doesn't taste right. This has happened to me before. <laughs> and this is not mine. But whose is it? And I had to go through all my messages to remember. So uh, it. That is always funny when that happens because it's happened more than once. So this is not my Riot, but I wish it were. So check this out. This is the Riot Exo. It comes with all this stuff, this cool leather pouch uh, for your for your belt and, and the cleaning cloth and the sticker, the extra hardware and all this really cool stuff. But check this knife out. You've all seen it a million times. This is their barely legal gravity knife. But have you seen it with that blade? Look at that blade. It's it's a it's a really crazy looking cleaver blade with a with a quite a interesting grind. I like this uh, almost 
slicer style grind. And I say slicer style, just uh, referring to the the sl upward sloping grind on the um, XM18 slicer by Hin Rick Hinderer. Um, but just very interesting blade. I had not seen this blade with that. It must be an exclusive from MechForce, which is where this stuff comes from. Um, look at that. Look at how that works. It's so, it's so cool. Um, do I need this in my collection? No. When I thought it was mine for an instant, I was thrilled to have it <laughs> for reference. But um, yeah, this this is one of the locking ones. Doesn't have a clip. Uh, it has that pouch, but uh, just a really unique and cool thing. And not extremely legal in many places as it's a gravity knife. And somehow, you know, legislation, uh, uh, um, what am I saying? Somehow legislatures have not gotten over the gravity knife thing. Uh, maybe they haven't given it much thought. That's probably more like it. Uh, okay, next up in this order that is not mine, but I am getting to check out and send along is something that, I would love to have this knife. This this blew my mind when I saw it, and uh, and and broke my heart when I <laughs> when I came down to earth and realized, Bob, what are you daydreaming? This is not your knife. Look at this thing, Tashi Barucha. I love Tashi Barucha's uh, designs, and what a cool dude. He is a cool guy, man. He he lives in Paris, France. He's got some really uh, cool jo d job in the design world. And he's just a classy, classy fella. And he designs these really sickeningly sweet knives. Look at this thing. Yowza. Recurve, harpoon, clip point. Um, you've got this. To me, this is sort of a, I don't know if it's intended to be so, but it's sort of a, a tip of the hat to Tom Mayo. That reminds me of a Tom Mayo kind of flourish. Um, look at the sculpting on this. Uh, bronze titanium pocket clip um the the outline the profile of this is just beautiful so i'm going to do a couple of close-up videos i'll do one on, on this and one on this so uh, i can catalog it and show what it looks like in my hand because that's the only way it's gonna ever be in my hand probably is um just to look at it uh wait I'm just noticing now it's got a uh, compound grind right here too. So this is all hollow until it gets to the tip, man. Okay. Well, thank you so much guys for entrusting me with these uh, incredible knives. I'm, I'm really thrilled to have them uh, in my possession and uh, look at that. And uh, I will get these along to you uh, post haste. Uh, one, one thing before I get out of here, uh, out of, uh, Knife Life News. I got to show you this. Uh, this was sent to me by Jock, a little thank you. Uh, I keep this on the back of my work ID. Um, and this is a, a little a Fred Perrin designed little get out of trouble thing. And it is awesome, man. It is so sharp. It is really wickedly sharp. Little beak here, just a little claw to take care of business, uh, you know, opening packages or, or whatever fits perfectly on the back of my work ID. And, uh, so I'll always have a little edge on me. Uh, however, I did notice it popped out of the sheath and I, I didn't know where it was. It was somewhere in my car and I'm like, Oh, shh. this is not a good thing to have loose. So I'm going to, uh, even though the sheath fits pretty well, I'm going to take another piece of tape and just batten that down to the back of my, um, to the back of my ID. So I don't have any surprises. Okay, let's get to this. That's a very, very, very small knife. Let's start talking about very large knives. And uh, uh, this this section called, hey, UK, that's not a zombie knife. This is a zombie knife. You know I hate quoting that Crocodile Dundee thing. It, it is such a well-worn trope. It, it, it almost makes me cringe. Um, like when Carol Brady used to do her, her, oh, that's the funniest thing I ever heard on the Brady Bunch. And if you're old, you know what I'm talking about. That used to make me cringe too. Zombie knives. What are zombie knives? Well, zombie knives are, uh, according to the United Kingdom, they're knives uh, large enough to take out a zombie. Really what they're talking about are those really ugly green handled knives with all the crazy blade shapes that are super cheap. Uh, well, people are buying them uh, to do knife crimes with. 
in the United Kingdom. We know knife crime is a big issue in the United Kingdom because they don't have guns to do their crimes with. They have to do them with knives. And so knives are disproportionately picked on. Uh, they have what they call the zombie knife. We all know what those look like. We all agree those should be outlawed because they're atrocious and hideous and tacky and don't do the job of knifing very well, um, uh, of cutting and being knives very well. So yeah, they should be outlawed, but large knives should not be outlawed. Um, you know what? I'm not going to weigh in on what uh, the United Kingdom needs to do with their laws, but I, I do have to say uh, when you start talking about things like, well, gun legislation and knife legislation, and then you listen to people talking about guns and knives who don't know anything about them, it always uh, is a little cringe. So I decided if you're going to call it a zombie knife, let's not talk about those tacky green handled things with the with the uh, with the biohazard symbols all over them. Those don't count. Those are those are cheese. Let's talk about if there were a real zombie apocalypse and Idris Elba did have to defend himself with a knife, what would he use? Now, it, I mentioned Idris Elba. Great actor. I love that guy. And he's also uh, about my age, so I have an affinity towards him. I think he's uh, he was great on The Wire. He's great in everything I've ever seen him in. But he's kind of a part of this national campaign uh, to eliminate zombie knives um, and and. And, you know, celebrities, they feel like they have to use their platform to further social causes that they agree with. And I, I guess I, I understand that. But um, Idris Elba, it, it's not lost on me that he has made a lot of money acting or I don't know how much money he's made, but he has maintained a career acting in movies where he has used weapons a lot. And whether or not you like it or whether or not that is the theme or the message, using weapons as a hero or a villain in a movie, which is glorifies everything, glorifies the weapon. So let's not be hypocrites. And I think maybe he got that message a little bit because he came out with a, not a retraction, but uh, a, a clarification saying we should not make illegal the carry of all knives. Uh, I think he was more um, bent on these larger knives that thugs were buying to do knife crimes with. Okay, so... There is a zombie apocalypse. Who knows? It's 2024. We don't know what we're going to see this year. Uh, so if there were a zombie apocalypse and you were to use a knife, you, of course, would have a knife in your kit. It might not be your main thing. You might prefer a pole arm or a sword, something you didn't have to reload, something quiet that didn't attract other zombies. The knife should be large enough to both swing and, and take off a head because... And the reason I mentioned that is because we all know that with a zombie, you have to separate its brain from its body to stop it. So th these have to be large enough to take off a head. So, you know, average neck width. Um, and they also have to be long enough to go through and stout enough to go through a skull in a in a thrust. It's it's not pleasant uh, conversation, uh, but. You know, sometimes we have to talk about things that are unpleasant because who knows? We have to prepare for all eventualities. First up on this is the Kukri Chaos from Cold Steel. Uh, this one uh, was featured last week in the bevy of badass blades because it is all of that. Uh, you have, let's start first with the with the historically proven Kukri style blade, which uh, was originally what the Copus uh, in, in ancient Greece. Um, and then, uh, got, I don't know, I don't know the path it took from Copus to Kukri, but it, it, it's a very, uh, proven shape, uh, blade heavy point down deep recurve. I mean, you are, you get incredible chopping out of this, but something that people don't realize, and you can see, um, Lynn Thompson videos where he talks about this. The Kukri is also a great thruster. Because think of um, think of a small fixed blade knife with a pistol grip, like the TDI from uh, uh, from K Bar, for instance. That uh, pistol grip um, puts the the point where you need it to be without having to turn your wrist. So when you're thrusting, you have got to turn your wrist like this to get the to get a straight blade to go where you want the point to go. But with a pistol grip knife, you don't have to change your wrist. That blade is right where you want it. Well, the same. <clears throat> excuse me, the same uh, concept uh, applies here with the kukri, because when you're thrusting, 
you don't have to you don't have to change that wrist angle you just you just push it in and as it pushes in it's it's also making a super wide channel in whatever you're pushing it into uh in this case we're talking zombies uh, you know the thrust is not going to be as valuable on a zombie unless you're going for the head this is probably not the best head thruster but you could split a head in half with that no problem or just remove it from the zombie body altogether um, I'm talking very flippant about this, and um, it, I am not actually using the term zombie as an analog for, for living human. Living human is something different. It's got muscles. It's alive. It, everything is tense and resisting, and, uh, and, and it hasn't, you know, it's not decomposing. A, a, a zombie, we can only assume, is a frail creature um, besides its teeth and its lust for brains. Okay, next up is the Ontario. Now this one's going to be hard to find because Ontario, uh, well, they're, I think they're going to be picking back up and changing. Uh, I think that, I think they are going to be picking up production, but who knows if the SP line will remain the SP 10 Raider buoy. This thing is so awesome. Now why this one and not any of the other, uh, far, uh, classier versions of this very blade that I have, I shouldn't say classy. I should say more expensive, more premium. Well, there are a couple of reasons here. Uh, this is that great uh, 1095, or is this 1075? Uh, it's either 1095 or 1075 uh, blade steel, and it is super tough. Uh, so you can, uh, so I've been banging this into that kiln dried wood uh, a lot, stabbing it into the, the stump out back a lot. Uh, it can take it and keep going, and it maintains a great edge. Uh, you might run into some, um, eventually some corrosion issues uh, because it is a high carbon steel, but this traction coating seems to be holding up pretty well. And though it starts off kind of rough, like a tops knife, uh, when it gets used, it smooths out and it slips through mediums even better. Um, but the reason I'm choosing this one in particular, besides the blade steel is this handle is great. It's, 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 it almost feels cushioned. Uh, it's rubberized, it's thick, and it is kind of sticky. Not sticky like uh, like decomposing plastic uh, or off-gassing plastic, but sticky like rubberized enough that it it's going to stay in hand. You've got that great guard here. You've got the bird's beak handle. You can be using this. I'm going to go to the main camera here. You could be using this uh, against a horde crowd of zombies uh, doing what you have to do, chopping heads and stabbing heads as you escape, or maybe you're making your way to rescue someone. But what I'm getting at is this will take all that impact and save your hand and save your joints and your and your arm. You know, you you hit enough hard zombie bone, uh, hacking through a crowd, enough skulls, it's going to start to rattle. This rubberized handle is really going to save that impact. You know, and um, so this is more of a practical uh, tool for the job. Uh, I have more glamorous tools like the one coming up, but this one's going to save your hand. This is probably the one you're going to want to go for. Even the, uh, the Kukri chaos with that, uh, with that knuckle duster, very effective knuckle duster. You could do a lot with it, uh, but it's going to hurt your hand after a while being hard aluminum. Next up, uh, tops knives made this for hunting wild pigs, but I think maybe they had zombies in mind. Now this one here is you know it's long enough to to do the head separation chore but this is way more about the thrust this is way more about the thrust because you have full um full width almost to the tip with this medial ridge here uh, so you get really great penetration with this and um with that really stout tip you could go through um you know helmets and you know if you have like a football player zombie coming after you i mean you could really breach a lot with with this uh with this tip uh slicing eh, it's a it's a bit oblique on the on the grind uh but this is like i said more of a thruster great ergonomics you've got uh the great tread here on the on the micarta the micarta will stay in your hand even when it's wet you know what i mean and these ridges here are are great uh, for just keeping it lodged in hand you've got the quillions here and the bird's beak great ergonomics great knife uh this this would be uh, a light quick 
thrusting kind of knife. All right, next in the this is a zombie knife right here. Uh, so I thought about the Ganunting sword on the wall behind me, and for various reasons, I chose not that sword, but this sort of knife version of it. This is the uh, Cortada by Doug Marcaida, uh, produced by Fox Knives in Italy. And uh, originally, I believe, produced uh, through Russian Blades. I think he's the guy who started the project. Um, you have a straight-edged blade, which is handy, but it's also canted here. I'm going to put the handle straight. Look at how downward that's canted. So it it has the effect of a sickle-shaped recurve, much like a Ganunting sword, except you don't have to worry about the curve. I, I don't worry about the curve anyway, but if, for straightening purposes and, and general utility, having this straight edge on a canted angle gives you the best of both worlds um, because you do get that accelerated cut of a recurve but you're not, you're not dealing with the curve itself. Point way down low has a very similar effect uh, to the Kukri on the thrust. Don't have to change your wrist angle too much to get that point where it needs to go. Uh, if you're wearing gloves, and who knows, while you're, um, while you're hacking your way through a crowd of zombies or you know, you're just kind of out there uh, in the territories, you might be wearing gloves a lot. Lots to... Uh, Lots to hurt your hands on. And remember, this is this is we don't have all sorts of modern medicine now at our behest. And even a simple infection on your hand could be your undoing. So you're probably wearing gloves. This jimping works great with gloves. Without gloves, this is more for trapping. Um trapping limbs and and catching them uh you're if you're in close fighting with your opponent you can do a lot with this but if you're not doing that you can also keep your thumb there and uh and thrust with it um but uh, the whole thing about the gloves is they are sharp it, it would be uncomfortable so uh so gloves is jimping or just leave it alone and use it for limb trapping uh limb trapping i don't recommend with a zombie y you're gonna peel something off it's going to be really gross next up this is also on that um pig hunting theme this is the odin wolf sow catcher this is great because it's light it's big and light and it's both a great thruster and a great uh, slasher slasher chopper we'll call it uh because you've got the uh, double edge here you've got recurve blades so this is you know this is going to help you when you have to lop off a zombie head because of that recurve you're not dealing with a sword sword makes it easier more compact space of a dagger like this those recurves are really going to help but of course you also have full thickness up to about very close to the tip right here uh, with this fuller and medial section here and um, so it'll be great for a, a thrust um, so this one is kind of a, uh, this is a shoe in I think, because it's the best of all worlds. Two edges, two recurve edges, a point, center line point, and then a, a, a thick medial section so it's not going to bend and break. D2 blade steel with the, uh, with the tumbled finish. It's an attractive knife too, and a great coffin style handle. The quillions are really good. If you, I mean, that that's really going to catch you. You, you thrust this and run into something hard, uh, that is really going to stop your hand. Um, so just a great all-around knife. I've heard people are having trouble now finding the double-edge version. Uh, I know that they have a single-edge version, which looks cool, uh, but I don't like the single-edged blade, the asymmetrical single-edged blade with the symmetrical handle. I went through that on Thursday Night Knives at way greater length than I needed to. Uh, next up, this one... This one you got to eat your Wheaties if if you're gonna have this be your your uh, your zombie apocalypse knife. You got to eat your Wheaties. You got to do your uh, your kettlebell exercises and all that. And that's the Puzan Predator Hunter buoy here. Uh, it doesn't even fit in the screen. Here, let's do this. Uh, I talk about this knife all the time. I love work tough gear. Unfortunately, this is my only work tough gear knife. I'm always kind of checking them out on on the various. Uh, purveyors and they just come and go so they it's a small batch company it's six guys in taiwan making these um so it's 
they, they don't pump out huge amounts of them. So not only are they really interesting designs made uh, made for specific purposes, mostly outdoor uh, and different uh, adventure purposes, uh, but they're really nicely made, like very nicely made. And then there's pride of ownership. You know, not too many people have these. So uh, if you're that kind of collector and you're interested in uh, things that are uncommon, this is great for that. But why is it great for a zombie apocalypse? Uh, it's big. It's heavy. Are you going to be able to recover? Is it more like an axe? Well, actually, I've learned that this knife, the balance, it's got a big, heavy handle. It's still balanced. Uh, it's like right here, right forward of the choil. But the handle and the weight and the length of the handle and, and the weight in the horse hoof pommel here makes it actually livelier in the hand than expected. This is not a fighting knife. But you could you could uh, use it for that purpose to, to great, um, great effect. 12 inch blade, very broad. This is a two and a half inch broad blade with a high grind. It's thin and slicey for such a big damn blade. And uh, yeah, you, it's got incredible shearing power. Um, so you could, you could, uh, I don't know. I, I think that for extended engagements through large crowds of zombies this this would be uh cumbersome and tiresome unless you're a, a big big guy uh you might want to go with something something else but for just the the raw power you know say say uh, a professional wrestler um zombie is coming at you this might be the kind of thing you pull out it also happens to have a great kydex sheath i'm not a big fan of all of the work tough gear uh, sheaths that i experienced but this one is stupendous and uh would be great like this like I, for this knife you hang it on your belt you're gonna have no pants but hang it over the shoulder have it right here uh is that a baldric is that what they call that a baldric uh would be very great very great carry for that okay next up uh this one also has great shearing power it is it is such a stalwart in the um outdoors arena that I, I can't help but think it would do uh, a very good job at at the zombie lifestyle because you could use this for survival and and uh, and zombie culling uh, to equal effect. So this is the R Tac Two uh, from from uh, Ontario Knives. Uh, also ha lived a second life as the Hungless, the SE Hungless. So kind of the same knife. Um, about a two inch broad blade here with a full height flat grind. Very sharp, 1095 blade steel. Uh, this thing has been through the mill. I've used this a lot, uh, but not in a long time. This used to be my desk knife. In other words, this hung on the on the leg of my desk before I got a new desk. And so it was always right there for what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but a great big sort of machete style knife. It's got a generously sized handle, uh, so big hands could use this. It's also a wide, a broad handle, um, and and that is good in my opinion for um, for heading off fatigue at the pass, uh, for for keeping fatigue away. A wider handle, not necessarily bulkier, but but broader, kind of kind of helps helps the forearms and everything. Why this one? It's that shearing power. First of all, you get an 11 inch blade, so you got a, a good span, um, but you've got a thin full height fl uh, flat grind, which is just gonna zip through uh, those those gross, smelly bodies like uh, like nothing. And it's great for a machete. It's good for clearing. You know, it's light enough, thin enough. You could use it for clearing paths. You could use it for all of your camp chores. Uh, this is a great all-around knife, actually. I, I I don't give this knife uh, as much credit at, or or press as I should, but this is awesome. And I think in a zombie situation where you're out there surviving and killing uh, zombies, this would be awesome. I need to I need to remember this knife and and pay more attention to it. Um, and then I had this aftermarket sheath made by who, by whom I don't remember, but it was someone uh, nothing fancy recommended way back in the day. Okay, next, this is a cool one. They're all cool, but here's the Svord von Temsky buoy. This thing, uh, 
also i believe was in last week's bevy of badass blades uh created by one of the original badasses uh, or i shouldn't say that but a badass from the 19th century um this guy von temsky he was a ranger uh in in newly settled or settling new zealand and uh he had a band of of thugs i don't know shouldn't call him that he he had his own version of the rough riders and he got everyone in that group a knife just like this had a, a knife forged like this 11 inches uh five sixteenths of an inch thick uh super stout um apple seed edge and 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 then this giant guard which not only guards you north to south but also east to west here you know so you have uh you have it on the side as well as the top and the bottom here so great guard very neutral coffin style handle it's just two parallel lines but is so comfortable and uh, you can swing this you can chop your wood with this you can have zombies with this health zombies with this and uh, it's just gonna go forever the real uh most exciting thing to me about this knife and why it's on this list is this apple seed edge this convex edge it is extremely sharp but extremely stout behind the edge. So um, maybe not great for cutting cutting uh, thin slices of Swiss off of that block of cheese, uh, but for everything else you're going to do, camp or, um, or zombie culling, this is going to be great. The one drawback, maybe not drawback, but uh, place it doesn't accelerate would, will be the thrusting. It's got not the most acute tip, does have a, an extremely sturdy tip with that swedge. Um, but so it's kind of diamond like at the tip, which is what you want. You want a swedge to to meet the primary edges at the tip and create a diamond so you can thrust. This doesn't quite get there, but uh, hey, man, this will do in a pinch. Great leather sheath, too. All right, second to last here is a cold steel, another cold steel. This one is the Rondell dagger, uh, and it's a, a modern version of a, of a medieval design. And uh, oof, this is strictly for breaching brain, uh, for breaching skulls. Um, you know, those zombie skulls can be hard, but this thing will go right through. Uh, it's a triangular shaped blade, which is illegal, I think, uh, by the Geneva Convention because it creates wounds that uh, that you cannot close and then, or that don't close up easily, at, at least. It's got these super oblique edges. I mean, obviously this is not a, a, uh, a cutting knife, but if you took this edge and hit a, a, a blade, if you're fighting another blade with this and you, Hit it with this, you're gonna snap. You you could easily chip or break a blade uh, hitting it with this. But really, this is a point-driven weapon. And then you have these rondelles at the at the pommel and at the guard here to keep your hand from slipping. So this is an old design, and um, this was going through uh, armor helmets back in the day and and plate armor. So uh, no doubt this this could take care of a zombie. Pretty, pretty nicely, handily. All right, for this last one, I think I got to go to the main camera because it's a little big. Uh, but of all the swords on the wall behind me, this is the sword I would choose. This is a about a 29-inch long. Um, most Filipino swords are about that long. Uh, this is the Talibang. And this one is made by traditional Filipino weapons. And... Uh, <laughs> It is tremendous. Now, why this sword? Here, I'm going to set this down. Let's see if we can get this in there, Jim. Uh, sort of. I'll, I'll change it around a little bit so you can see different portions of it. Here, first, we'll talk about the blade. The blade to handle. You look at the look at the extreme drop in that. So this is an incredible chopper, um, and but it's also light enough that you're not chopping too you're not chopping hard heavy things with this uh this is meant for uh two things brush and people this is a, definitely a weapon but it started life as most uh weapons did as a field implement um geez there's just no place no room for this deep recurve on that blade 
Nice point. Great thruster. Uh, again, we're, get, we're getting that situation. Okay, I'm going to go to the big, the main camera here. We get that situation with the tip where um, you don't have to change your wrist angle too much to thrust. Uh, you've, you've got a chopper, you've got a thruster. But what I love about this is it's light and it's balanced and you can use it all day. You could, you could fight with this thing all day and not be fatigued. I could anyway, and I'm not some Mr. Tough Guy, strong dude. Um, you've got that handle that's going to capture the hand and keep it in there. You've got lace up here, not only to um, for better grip to absorb the sweat, but hey, let's face it, you're going to have other liquids there too, so it will stay in hand. Uh, the one, one possible drawback is that this is high-carbon blade steel. You're going to have to maintain it, but it will sharpen easy as it dulls easily if you're interested in this kind of exotic uh bladed weapon the philippines uh are full of them they've just got endless amounts of really cool knife and sword blade designs check out traditional filipino weapons.com uh they have smiths uh down it's run by a guy who does a, has a pakiti church school in um connecticut he's got a bunch of uh blacksmiths down there in the philippines who know these weapons and they build beautiful versions of them. Uh, you too could have one yourself. All right. Thank you for coming in uh, on this dark journey through the zombie apocalypse. But I just wanted to uh, straighten the, a couple of uh, straighten the record out a little bit uh, with the zombie knife thing coming out of the UK. So I figured uh, why not? Why not talk about what a real zombie knife would be? And yes, yes. Illegalize those ugly, tacky, green handled, uh, zombie knives, but not because they're knives, just because they're tacky. All right. Be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, where we give away the North, uh, the Northern Knives uh, package. Uh, and then and then join us for Sunday for the interview show. It'll be great. We got some really, really great interviews coming up. Uh, so stay tuned. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.